Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum. Looking forward to a great time together. Ruth, we've got a couple of guests with us today. We're going to be talking, first of all, with Dylan Conley, who is with Affordable Solar. Kind of an interesting concept of some new things happening in the realm of solar energy. And we also have as a guest, Sonia Warwick, and she's with the Roadrunner Food Bank. You know, talking about uh, food scarcity and how that, that can be supplied really makes a difference. So, yes. good interviews coming up. Don't miss out on a minute. to have with us today Dylan Conley with Affordable Solar. We're going to be talking today about energy and maybe cost savings. You know, most of us at this juncture uh, could probably use some uh, cost savings. Dylan, we're glad to have you with us today. Thank you for coming by. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, t give us just a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get involved with the solar industry? And then we're going to talk about what your company is involved with. Yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, I've always been passionate about energy efficiency. And I got into solar about five years ago, specifically, after uh, working on a couple of projects, making buildings more efficient. And then we put solar panels on top, and we were seeing a lot of great tax credits. And I'm starting to see, you know, this solar thing is getting reasonably priced, and I wanted to really explore that more. Okay. Well, let's talk about the company Affordable Solar and what they're doing in New Mexico, if we could. Yeah. Uh, what is your company all about? I mean, it has a great name. <laughs> what, how does that play into everyday living? Yeah. Affordable Solar started out um, 25 years ago, actually, in 1998. Okay. Albuquerque owned and operated company. We were AA Affordable Solar uh, early in the back in the Yellow Pages days to be top of the list. Top um, of the list, top of mind. Here yeah. So uh, Affordable Solar, is it, it's a great name, and it, it's one that comes up a lot. But we're actually the largest solar installer in the state. Okay. Uh, any given year, we might install 50 to 70% of all the solar panels that go in the state because we do residential, commercial, and large-scale solar projects as well. Now, today we'd like to kind of go down a, maybe a little bit different uh, a trail, if we could, talking mm -hmm. about community solar. Now, that's a newer concept, at least to me. Bring us up to speed on what community solar is all about. Most of the time, what I've seen is solar panels on people's houses. But, you know, I have seen some things popping up where there's these large, like, fields of solar panels. Is, is that what community solar is, or is it something different? Yeah, there's, there's definitely multiple different scales of large projects, uh, ranging from 20 acre sites. Wow, that's a lot. 40 acre sites. These are 20 to 40 acre. And then we also build really large power plant size projects. Um, it could be a thousand acres of solar panels. So pretty large. But these are more community scale. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about ads, advertisements for solar. Oh, we're going yeah. to be seeing a lot more advertising around community solar. We just kind of wanted to explain to folks what that is and what they're going to be potentially hearing about more. Well, why don't you tell us about it? Because I, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure I fully grasp what, yeah. you're, what it means. So most people up to this point have probably gotten their uh, electricity through a, you know, through in New Mexico, through P&M, mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the local provider. How is community solar different or is it different? Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, community solar is not something traditionally allowed um, because PNM is a, a monopoly. They are the folks you need to use. Um, they don't technically want competition because they need to be the monopoly to operate. Uh, so they're regulated by the uh, PRC. Mm -hmm. But community solar is a, a concept that's in 26 other states and came to New Mexico and was passed in legislature just about two years ago. Okay, so a new concept. Uh, new concept to New Mexico, but you know some folks yeah, have been us. doing it for about 10 years. Okay. Um, rather than build one solar project on a house, um, you can build one large solar system that can off offset power from multiple homes. 
And community solar is a method of allowing, allowing for that. Um, because if I just wanted to go out and build a big solar system and power 10 different houses, that's not allowed under the current rules. So this allows for large scale systems, typically about 2,000 homes worth of power, mm -hmm. to be on one 20 to 40 acre site. Okay, so I guess where I'm, I'm still a little lost yeah. is if, uh, you know, if, you, if it's solar panels on your house, it provides electricity to your house, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess there's some way that they can, you can sell back some of the energy to PNM. Right. Yeah. But how does it help me to be a part of the community solar group? Uh, because Is it just because it is renewable energy or is it because it's cheaper or, I mean, you know, how are they going to get the power to my house? I mean, fill us in. Yeah, so each community solar site is somewhere on PNM's territory. Um, our projects that we're developing are going to be a couple mi miles out of town, um, one in Bernalillo, Sandoval County, okay. Valencia County. Where there's more acreage. A little bit more acreage, a little more space. And then virtually that power is going to be provided to the house. Uh, in reality, it's just going to go into the bigger grid of power. And then there's going to be about 2,000 subscribers per system. And if you're a subscriber, you're essentially saying, I would like to participate in this project and get the power output the same way it would have if it was on your house. All right. So you're just saying, I, I want it to be solar versus being generated some other way. It's not really like you get a specific uh, feeder line to your house or anything of that nature. Yeah, so you know, a traditional electric bill is about one-third paying for the power lines to get the power to your house, mm -hmm. okay. and about two-thirds of that is, is then paying for the, the power plant and then the power, power to make generation. the power. I gotcha. So if, if you subscribe to a community solar system, you still pay for P&M to bring the power to you. So you're paying... Their lines? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So you're still paying the third of your electric bill, but the other two-thirds is now the solar system is providing that power to you. Does it tend to be a little less expensive or is it about the same? Yeah, so on a traditional electric bill, if it's $100 a month, you might be paying more like 90 instead of 100 in total. So you'd save about 10, anywhere to 20% on your electric bill. Okay, so there could be a cost savings and that's always, yeah. Every, who doesn't want a cost savings? I, mean, I don't know of anybody who's like, oh, well, charge me more, right? That, that's not part of our nature. Well, who's that's, eligible that's, to participate? That's a really important point is, you know, if we were to just give $10 savings to the richest folks in New Mexico, that's not really, you know, a good story. So what we're trying to do is allow folks that traditionally can't do solar on their roofs to have the chance to, you know, participate in savings. So, so how do you, how do you uh, differentiate in that area? Great question. So statutorily to pass community solar, 30% of the folks signed up need to be qualified low income. Oh, okay. So, and, and then it further, most projects are actually going to have 50 plus percent low income. So that way it's not, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of wealthy people that could do solar on their roofs. It's more folks that are renters or low credit or the folks that are low income that can save. So let's say somebody's watching and they're you know moderate income. I mean, maybe they're not high income, but they're mm -hmm. not low income either. Um, you know, it, is it how does it how is that bill set up in such a way that it benefits all equally? It sounds like it's really favoring some over others. Is it? it yeah, it is actually. Mm. It's, it's it's really trying to make power available or energy savings available to those who need it, like low income folks. So there's actually going to be a little bit of a bonus if you're low income, but you'll still have the you know ten dollars savings if you're you know moderate income individual, and fifty percent of the system subscribers will be moderate or higher incomes. So tell us about your you have a nonprofit group. I understand. What, what, how does that work into your overall vision? Yeah. So great question. So we're uh, in needing 2,000 folks per solar system that we install. We're hoping to install about seven solar systems. Um, 40 total will be allowed in the state in this pilot program, and we're hoping to build seven of them. And that's 14,000 folks we got to find. And so the traditional method of finding 14,000 people and uh, households is to go door to door. And rather than go door to door, we are working on a nonprofit program where we will um, work with nonprofits 
have them solicit to their network of folks and find folks that are, a lot of them low income, that could benefit from this program. So we'd pay nonprofits a referral fee instead of the door knockers. Do you get, uh, when people are beginning to you know, connect with you, I mean, how long is it going to be until this program's on the air? Or uh, online, however yeah. you want to say it. Great question. So we'll be starting to sign folks up in April, May this year. Will they be able to get power that quickly? It, the, the projects are going to take another year to year and a half to build. Ah. And at that point, they'll be ready. Uh, but so maybe 12 to 15 months. Mm-hmm before we're actually there. When the bills come, will those bills come from a different group like Affordable Solar or does it come from PNM or how does that yeah, there's function? Two, there's two methods, but there's traditionally two bills, one from PNM still for the one third mm-hmm. and then one from a company like Affordable Solar for the two thirds portion, the, gotcha. the power, uh, but the discount. However, there's also a method of just paying one third party that then pays P&M and for the solar system. All right. So that's nice to have one bill in some cases. Sure. Well, some new opportunities that are going to be rolling out in the area of community solar over the next year, year plus. And so I would encourage you to keep your eyes and ears open. Our guest today is Dylan Conley with Affordable Solar right here in Albuquerque. Thanks for being with us, Dylan. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. As we are now already middle of the first month of 2023, can you believe that, Ruth? We are already seeing many of you getting involved with giving here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting. And, and honestly, as we start a new year, it's really important that we all do our best. Now, I know that you're probably getting your giving receipts. Those are going out, aren't They've, they? They're out. They're out. Mm-hmm. So if you gave last year, you should be receiving that in the mail. Yes. But your help is really important. Now, here's the things that we're going to be working on in 2023. We do have to continue making some upgrades in the studio, but also in master control. Mm-hmm. There's going to be some new things happening in both of those areas. We'll be t- giving you more details about that. When you give to the President's Club, those $50, $75, and $100 donations, it really makes a difference in helping us to be able to make these upgrades. You know, just like things at your house, things break that provide the ability for us to, to get the programming to you. We have on top of Sandia Crest, in fact, three air conditioners that keep the building cool. Mm. And we're having trouble with two of the three. Now, right now it's cold up there, but you know, you've got to keep things fixed. Your help really matters. Sure. Be sure to visit us on our website at kazq. 32.org to give safely online. You can always call into the station 505-884-8355 extension 101 or if you have your donation ready mail it to Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico 87109 and I'd also like to say if you have moved in the past year please be sure to call in and update your address and that is good for the giving receipts because those will come back to me if it's not a current address but also for the newsletters every month. And as we have been talking about, those are going digital. So we'd like to move in that direction. Be sure to send in your email address to info at kazq32.org. So coming in this new year, we can go forward and everything is digital, easy. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for all that you do and stay connected with us. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. The privilege today to have with us Sonia Warwick. Sonia is with Roadrunner Food Bank. Probably many of you have heard of Roadrunner Food Bank. Sonia, glad to have you back. Oh my goodness, we're honored to be here and thanks so much for inviting us back on the show. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's always good to start off by just uh, refreshing people's memory. Tell us a little bit about what Roadrunner Food Bank is. I know that a food bank is different than a food pantry, but I only know that because I've talked to you before. (laughs) Tell us the difference. What is a food bank? Yes. So in essence, as our name implies, we literally take in food and we bank it for food pantry-like partners. Um, So throughout um, our relationships with Feeding America and grocery store partners and other food industry 
um, companies, we bring in food to the food bank, and then that benefits our network of hundreds of partners located all across the state of New Mexico, and in addition, four regional food banks that service that number of counties as well. So you service other food banks? Are you like the largest food bank we in the are, state? We are. We are. So our facility is roughly 130,000 square feet, the warehouse itself. That's big. It's That's big, huge. and we are, think of us like a distribution center. It's gotcha. the size of a Costco or a Sam's Club for those who are familiar with that size of uh, facility. And, you know, like I said before, we're bringing in all kinds of food from all across the country, and then it is going out to our food pantry partners or other similar organizations downstream of us for okay. the benefit of people who are in need. Well, we're launching into a brand new year, and any time that we get into a new year, I think we begin to you know, automatically try to reset ourselves yeah. a little bit. What can I do different? How can I volunteer? What, what's needed? So yes. tell us about the new year needs because we're kind of branching into the early part of a brand new opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, the uh, early parts of the year in terms of volunteer needs are a little lean for us. So okay. we definitely could use the volunteer support um, in the first quarter of the year. Uh, if you have time and want to come and volunteer two or three hours at our Albuquerque facility, we'd love to have you. You do everything from um, boxing food to sorting produce to repacking bulk items into family size servings and more. Okay, so when you get items from whoever it's donating it mm -hmm. to, whether it's, you know, I, and I'm sure there's a wide variety, some of those things then come in in large packages or do they come in, they in do. bulk or what, what does that mean? Exactly. It's bigger bulk than you'll ever see at a grocery store. So, for example, we have relationships with um, uh, food companies that give us like these 2,000 pound totes of cereal, for example, and you know it's how do you <laughs> how do you deal with two thousand? I mean, I just think yesterday I was I was at the grocery store and bought a box, right? You know, so I, I don't know, what, sixteen ounces or something. I mean, how do you deal with two thousand pounds of cereal? Exactly. So, and that's where helping hands of volunteers come into play. So we have a clean room where you wear a lovely lab coat and a hairnet, and then we have those volunteers basically weigh the cereal to a set account, a set number, if you will. They seal it and they label it. It. And so it's really before it's ever made it to the packaging that you see at the grocery store level. So that's just one item that we need help with um, wow. in our warehouse. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's an interesting thought. Exactly. Isn't it? <laughs> you would have never. You get to kind of be on the assembly line, so to speak. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. And uh, so so that's just one of the things that you do. Yeah. Now let's say that there's someone tied with an organization, a church. And you're thinking, you know, we would like to have a food distribution. Yes. Is this a good time of year? I mean, it's cold. I mean, I'm, I'm th I don't know. I mean, is there a better time of year to have one than, than others? Yeah, what I would tell people is, you know, if you're looking to introduce that as part of your faith ministry, you know, please contact us. We'll want to have a conversation with you. There is some set criteria that we're looking for oh, for okay. partners. Uh, you know, we are looking for people who want to distribute um, on a regular basis. To so it's not like a one-time thing? No, it's not a one-time thing. We want to establish that consistency for people who are in a community so that they know that that service is there throughout the rest of the year. So let's talk about that, build on that just a minute. D does that mean that you have to do it every week or can it be twice a month or does it exactly. can be monthly? It can be monthly. Quarterly? It can be, like, yeah, and we would probably at least encourage you to do monthly, but we do have some sites who distribute weekly. We have some sites who distribute more than, okay. more than once a week. We have some that do once a month. We have others that do twice a month. It's kind of all across the board and we are looking for partners in some of our rural communities in particular where we need to beef up those relationships with new partners and existing partners there. You know, it's it's always a work in progress, isn't it? So Absolutely. You're, you never really completely get there. No. I, I think we all wish, you know, if, if I just... If I could just do one more check mark, I'll be there. <laughs> but it usually doesn't work that way. Now, you have, I understand, something uh, that we've never talked about, to my knowledge. Okay. It's kind of a, a fundraiser uh -huh. that yes. you do, and it has to do with soup. And we're talking like, you know, different flavors of soup, <laughs> exactly. like vegetable soup or chicken <laughs> soup or whatever. And you call it a soup er. Bowl, bowl, right? Yeah. Everybody gets their soup in a bowl. Hey, tell us about <laughs> it. What's that all about? Of course. So this event we've been hosting, oh, probably since the mid to late 90s. And we host it inside our warehouse, of course, with, you know, all, everything that has happened the past two years. We've not been able to host in-person events. But in, Maybe in a that's nutshell, why we've not talked about it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but in a nutshell, it's a soup and dessert sampling event that's held right in our warehouse right Yum. here in Albuquerque. And it's a fundraising event, you know, so we invite restaurants to come and serve um, their favorite.
favorite recipe, their soup recipe or their favorite dessert recipe. We have some bringing multiple soups. Wow. We have some bringing soup and dessert. And I am telling you, these are so at least what I've seen some of the restaurants submit already is um, things that they're going to bring are going to be very delicious. Are you still taking volunteer groups to participate? Or are you pretty yeah, much full we're up we're pretty much year? full, at least on our Super Bowl volunteer placements. But we do have some opening for any restaurant out there. Oh, that's what I meant. Who yeah. would like to, yeah, for any restaurant who would like to um, sign up, we've got some slots still available. And of course, you know, people from the community can definitely buy tickets. Um, What's a ticket cost to a belly? Like yeah, that? so for this, it's $50 for for basically 13 years and old, years old and up, excuse me. Sure. And then if you can bring children to this as a family friendly event and our children's tickets from ages five to 12 are $15 a piece. Where is it located? Right at our warehouse, which is just around the corner from this studio at uh, basically uh, Office and Singer, major cross streets, Jefferson and I-25. I kind of know where Office and Singer are you located, do. having uh, cruised around the neighborhood before. <laughs> so, all right. So that that's great. Well, this event for your uh, soup and desserts, what date does it come? Yeah, it's going to be held on Saturday, February 4th, and it's a great opportunity to have it right in the middle of the day. So public hours of the event are from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, you know, the, our front doors will open at 10, so if you're not sure you want to buy tickets early, you can come that day and purchase tickets in person. Day of. Yeah, but we are selling tickets now, so you can visit our website at rrfb.org, and you'll see a story up there that will take you to the details on how to buy a ticket online. Okay, so don't forget about that. That's going to be in the month of February, or opening Saturday, I believe, isn't it? Saturday, Saturday February the 4th. 4th, yes. So that's going to be a special date. It's middle of the day. You said it middle starts around day, 11? 11 o'clock. Okay, mm -hmm. goes till 2, 3, 2, two, two o'clock. All right. Mm -hmm. That's about right for lunch, right? You know, a, oh. a lunchy kind of event. And I can't believe how full you get on these wonderful samples of soup. I have been to some events like that and it is surprising yeah. it is surprising <laughs> how you you leave there and you're like wow i didn't expect to to feel so uh, full after <laughs> all of that tasting yes. yeah it's, it's great uh how does this specific event help you because you know it, it sounds fun, but I'm sure there's a purpose to it. There is. Of course, like with any event that nonprofits hold, you know, this is a way that we raise money in times of year that are a little leaner for us. So obviously, as we start the new year, um, we do see, you know, donations that are down compared to the holiday months. And it's a gotcha. great way also to remind the community that this is a different way that you can get involved and uh, help the food bank, too. And come and enjoy some wonderful entertainment, some wonderful soup, some wonderful dessert from... Uh, oh, there's entertainment. You didn't there mention is. that before. What is that? Include? Yeah. So, um, of course, we have a silent auction so people can, you know, bid on auction items. But we also have a band called the Peacemakers who's been donating their services to this event for years. And they play wonderful music. And um, it just makes kind of a nice, friendly, fun event that people can meander around in our warehouse and uh, enjoy soup and dessert to their hearts. And I would imagine that it also gives them a better you know, picture of who you are and what you do. Absolutely. If you're able to actually be on the ground at, the, uh, you know, at, at Roadrunner and to see what they're doing as a food bank. Do you, do you give many tours or things like that? Or just we let do. people look yeah, around? Yeah, of course. You know, we'll have staff on site to you know, right. answer questions for any guest who has any specifics that they want to know. And um, if they want a more depth, in-depth kind of tour for us, we can arrange that with them at any okay. time. Okay. So remember this special soup and dessert event that it's being called the soup er bowl. You know, you're <laughs> going to get your own soup in a bowl that day and it'll be fun. Plus desserts. Hey, February the 4th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that'll be at Roadrunner Food Bank. If people want to volunteer, what's the best way they can contact yeah, you? Yeah, if they want to volunteer to help in our warehouse, um, please get a hold of our volunteer team. Uh, that information is also on our website, or you can email volunteer at rrfb.org. All right. Well, there's some great information for you today. <laughs> Sonia Warwick with the Roadrunner Food Bank. Thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you for having us. Go to the book of Galatians chapter number six as we wrap up our time together. Ruth, this is a uh, passage that I was uh, sharing on in a recent message, but you know, it just really speaks to us 
about the way to get ahead and the, and the fact that we can find victory in our lives. Let's start at verse number seven and go down a little ways. Sure. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant, and those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Boy, there is so much wonderful uh, content in those verses. The first thing that we notice in this is the fact that God is just. You know, we live in a world right now where there's a lot of injustice. There's a lot of partiality. There's people who seem to be getting by with things and and you shake your head. But let me tell you, nobody's really getting by with anything. Mm -hmm. The the justice of God catches up with people. People sometimes think that they're going to get by with it, but it always comes home to roost. There's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, be sure your sins will find you out. It's true. They, They come back and those things that we sow come and they are manifest. It says those who lived only to satisfy their flesh or their own sinful nature, they're going to reap, harvest, and decay. And you know, Mm. that is one, as a pastor, I deal with so many people who have gone down wrong roads Mm -hmm. and they're frustrated with what they're reaping in their Mm -hmm. life. But let me tell you, if you want to change what you are harvesting, change what you're sowing. Mm -hmm. Because it will only change once you begin to plant new seeds. If you plant good seeds and you wait, because you, you sow, you wait, and then you reap. You do not reap right away you're going to begin to see things change in your life, but and, it does take time. And that's what I was going to uh, add to that when you were saying that, is because sometimes we begin to uh, plant new seeds and we want an immediate change. But that takes time. Just like taking, it took you time to get us time to get just where we are, it's going to take us time to change that. And many times we get frustrated because we want automatic. We want things to happen right away when it's, this is God's way. Amen. God's process. way. Yes, there's a process. So you sow, you wait, and then you reap. And really the next verse really deals with that. The ninth verse, which says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. It's easy to get tired yes. of doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. It's easy to get tired doing the sowing into your family. Or the waiting. Uh, yeah. Tithing, being a person who's a faithful mm-hmm. steward of the things God has given you. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Mm-hmm. Man, what a powerful passage. That's good. Good stuff. Thanks for being with us today. We look forward to next time. Until then, have a wonderful day.